now, it's coming from social media. Mm -hmm. It's coming from, you know, whatever, however the wind's blowing today. Mm -hmm. You know, the wind's blowing that way today. Mm -hmm. Then right. you're cool. You're good. You're, yeah. you're rolling with it, you know. And then when it shifts, that, that it'll go back and it'll do something else. And so the only thing that we know is going to stand um, scripture says heaven and earth is going to pass away, but his word is going to always stand. Mm -hmm. And so that's the place where we can have character and integrity, not be double-minded. Mm -hmm. But how do you all have these conversations with all of the, the, the things that are out there today and, and the mindsets that people are getting and gathering? Well, how, how do you say that to them? Because mm -hmm. you may not be able to just talk scripture to them. You just got to talk to them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. How, how do y'all talk? Let's, let's talk about it. I believe that... that um First, you just you have to live it, mm -hmm. and you have to gain their trust. You know, you can't just go up to everybody and just start. Um, you know, it just it's just different ways that you have to that you have to approach everyone. Everybody is not the same. You can't have that same one sentence for every single person because everybody's not the same. You can't talk to everybody the same. So I believe that we gain people trust first by living the life and letting mm -hmm. our light so shine, and then after that. Then you open that door and you go and talk to them, but be Holy Spirit led because right. you can't talk to everybody the same. That's what good. I tell Stephanie mm -hmm. is not going to work for Gerald. That's true. Mm -hmm. That's yeah, good. That's a, you know, that's a good point, too, because a lot of times you have to learn how to be adaptive, especially mm -hmm. in, in business and, and secular, you know, the secular world, because we all have jobs that's not, you know, within the church. You know, everybody mm -hmm. works a different right. career. So a lot of times you have to understand, like she said, you know, when you approach people, first of all, you have to care enough about people to kind of look at their surroundings. You know, try to think, in a sense, how they're thinking and try to put yourself in their shoes. That don't mean that you're going to do what they do, right. but, you know, try to think outside the box because, like you said, they may not handle things the way that you may handle them. So I think the first thing I know what I do at my job is I basically just try to speak to everybody in their own language. You understand? So sometimes that may mean I may not bring up a scripture the whole conversation. Mm -hmm. I may not never bring it up. Right. But I always try to make sure that, okay, let me see why is this person thinking this way, number one. And if I can put myself in their shoes, then maybe I can kind of see how their perspective and how they look at it. Then once you set that foundation, I think, like you said, you gain a person's trust. And it's not trying to manipulate, but it's just trying to show them, okay, I care enough to kind of understand how you think and how you do things. So now let's kind of exchange ideas and bounce off one another. And then now we can kind of work something towards, you know, building the foundation. Because I know a lot of times people may necessarily have problems on my job. And I just talk to them real. Understand, like, sometimes that may be just me sitting there and listening and letting them tell me what's wrong. You know? So how do, how, do you, how do you address the fact, because we're talking about character and integrity, that was not integral. Mm hmm <laughs> that was not in the I mean, that's just, you know, not, 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 not going around there. Mm -hmm. That yeah. was not in I mean, You I, said you were going to do this. It didn't happen. Yeah. I mean, and I think wow. uh, that's the best approach when you're dealing with someone who's not being integral. Because I think for so long, our society has okayed it. To where, you know, That's to a true. point to where, you know, uh, even with people, people in their work ethic and mm -hmm. big bro, you probably see this more than anybody. Yeah. You got an employee that's consistently late to work. Uh oh. You know, <laughs> and you have to, and you have to consistently get on to them. Uh, and every time they tell you, I'm going to do better, I'm going to do better, but it's a habit with them. And I think with the best approach to fixing that problem is to be direct yeah. and mm -hmm. say, you know, hey, you, you didn't do what you said you were going to do. Um, and, and you have to be okay with that. And, and mm -hmm. I'm not talking about being harsh or yeah. being ill, but I th <laughs> just asking how do you do that, like, yeah. I think that that's the best way. Well, um, yeah, you know, exactly. you know, yeah, accountability. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I was just going to, my, my, my thoughts on it is this accountability <laughs> is holding each other accountable. Mm -hmm. wow, um, that helps with building Character, character right. and, and integrity. integrity. Yeah. Right. right. And okay, I, so I that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Okay. Sometimes it can come off, you know, one thing that stands out to me is G always puts, like, he's quick to to put me in my place with certain things. <laughs> but it's, but it's love. when he sees that my character you, is being wavered, <laughs> he holds me accountable on it. And that's, yeah. that's something that it's direct. It's, mm -hmm. hey, bro, like, you said you was going to do this, or you, you're not doing this, but you said, like, and it's holding me accountable, and it makes my character line up how right. it's supposed to be. And, and the flip coin of that is... I know, as, because I've known you for so long and that I do know your character, I know that you can handle, and you would want it that way. Right. Because, and that's another 
test of characters, how do you react when someone lets you know that you're out of character? Ooh. You know, how do you react to it? Because <laughs> if you if you don't recognize it, then you know, you you know, like like Dad was saying earlier, you could be being manipulative yeah. or just being a chameleon or being whenever situation you're in, you're just adapting to that. Mm-hmm. But but you know like like you said and I and I do that out of love you, you right, know that know. me and you know that you do the same thing to me. So what but, do you, what do you, how do you handle a person that don't know that? Well, <laughs> you know, you know, let, me, hold on, let me hit my brother. Back. You know what? Honestly, though, I think I, no, seriously, to help to help him out. I think a lot of times though, people that don't have like Bishop was saying, it's sometimes just laying the consequences. Right? Yeah. Just being 100. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, it, like you said, it's not trying to necessarily scare nobody, but mm-hmm. you brought up the being late. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, and I, in our rule big at work, we pretty much go, but listen, you get two times to be late in one month. <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? After that third time, you get a write-up, and the second time, you know what happened, you out the door. Right, and that's and, process. And, and sometimes the best way to build integrity is to follow through on the consequential side. Yeah. And, and, and that don't mean that you don't... And, and think about it. Jesus does that with us. That don't mean that you don't love him. That don't mean that you're not here for him. But at right. the end of the day, for every action, there's a what? A reaction. Yes, so, every, so every time you do something, you understand, there's a consequence to everything we do, whether it's good or bad. Mm-hmm. So sometimes mm-hmm. laying them consequences out <clears> there, <throat> you know, in a constructive form will mm-hmm. help build that. <laughs> yeah. They don't want to listen Real all time. the way. Well, you, you know, <laughs> one thing I, I want to just throw on the table again, because we're dealing in a time where... Uh, People are being raised entitled, mm-hmm. you know, uh, even down to playing sports and things. They give everybody a trophy. Yeah. You lost every game. Yeah. 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 You understand what I'm saying? No, no, no um, consequences mm-hmm. for their lack of effort, right. their lack of performance. For lack of anything, and so now people just show up like I'm here, <laughs> right? You know, I'm here. Pay me. That I'm here. Well. well, I tried because that's the way you have a generation of people being raised now. Well, we tried. We showed up. You sat down on the field. Uh oh. <laughs> right. Mm. You sat down uh-huh. and you helped. You did not help the team. Right. You don't get a trophy. Right. Okay. I, People may think I'm sounding mean, but what I'm saying is you're producing a character and a, and a behavior mm-hmm. in a people, and then when they get old, you want them to somebody to hire them and get them a job, but you have raised them to feel entitled, so they mm-hmm. don't feel that they need to do the work, they don't feel like nobody can tell them anything, uh, I'm here, you know, give me my check, I, I, I came, you know, I, I got here when I could, you know. All of these types of things being bred into generations, and then we're getting the results of society today, and and so how do you how do y'all Are you deal with that? Go ahead, go ahead. I just believe that you first of all you got to know your audience. Like you know, mm-hmm. there's a certain way that you could talk to a born again believer, but if they're not born again and they hadn't accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as their personal savior, then they don't know you know, how to act, you know what I'm saying? And so when we talk about character, the fruit of the spirit, it should be our character. And so character and integrity, like they're cousins. They go together like grace and mercy. So where you find character, you should find integrity. <clears throat> and the basic, the base word of characteristics is character. And so when you understand that that's developed in you, so you go through, you know, situations, circumstances, and then you begin to grow and you learn to be better, then you can apply it. But in those face, in those times of adversity, those things like that, they your character comes out, and so you just got to be able to address people and say, you know, what characteristic are you showing? You know, is that whatever you say that you are? If you are saved and you are Christian, you born again, however you want to put it, you a child of the Most High God, then you are a representation of that. So you should be what He says that you should be. So you just got to be able to point those things out and know what you should look like inwardly because that's the inward um, that's the inward image, your character and your integrity. Let me throw this definition out of, of integrity. Walk again, honesty and honor. Mm-hmm. Integrity is personal inc- incorruptibility, soundness, completeness, honor, and honesty. Honesty is correct relationship with the highest level of reality. Hmm. <laughs> I like this. God himself is ultimate reality. Yes. That's right. Truth is sacred because departure from truth is departure from God. 
The issue of truth is crucial to what we believe to be true about God and life. And you know what? Going back to the accountability that B was talking about earlier, I think on the other side, accountability helps build integrity and character. Because mm -hmm. like you said, if you're going to a job or a church or a function, wherever it is that you're going, yeah. if you're not being held accountable by your leaders, your ministers, you know, your boss, whatever, then, you know, you're not going to ever experience what integrity is. I mean, think about it from a different standpoint. Why would you? If you're not being held accountable, then you have no reason really to think about it, to be a person of integrity because nobody's holding you to a higher standard. So I think a lot of times it goes both sides. It goes to the individual, mm -hmm. you know, that, yes, we should, you should have that integrity from within, but it also goes from the people that's mentoring you or steering you because if they're not holding you accountable, then you have no initiative or, you know, you have no will to even get there. And so a lot of times when we talk about, you know, negative consequences, it's not all the time about being mean, but sometimes, especially on a job standpoint, like, you have to show, sometimes, my dad always used to always tell me, sometimes you got to show folk better than you can tell them. <laughs> Just being real, sometimes you got to show people better than you can tell them. So, you know, like, you use the instance, like, if you keep being late from work, you know, you, listen, you understand how to have integrity when you show up and door code change, you ain't got no job right. from being late all the time. Just being honest. Right. You'll figure it out, yeah. and, and it may take a hard lesson, but, you know, it's that accountability. I think that's what drives character and, and integrity sometimes, you know what I'm saying? And you know what, you know what else, uh, that I that I like to look at, man. I when I was when I was younger, I was like I think I was like seventeen. I was working for Domino's Pizza, and man, we had a we had a, a Christmas party, and I'm and I'm so godly thankful for my for the guy who hired me because he taught me uh, a lot about integrity. And one year we had this Christmas party, and everybody was supposed to be there. I I committed to saying, hey, I'm gonna be there. Mm -hmm. Well, one of my friends came in town, and uh, we ended up hanging out. Oh, wait. Me and Ish and all, you know, we, 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 you know how it went. And I didn't go, right? Mm -hmm. And and it wasn't anything that I was uh, subject, you know, I was supposed to do. Like, it, it was optional. Yeah. But I committed to going. And I'll never forget the conversation I had with my manager that next day. And it wasn't out of, you know, he wasn't writing me up. I wasn't getting in trouble of any kind. But the conversation that he had had with me stuck with me so much because even though, even though he couldn't do anything he, he you know he couldn't you know I couldn't get fired or anything the the disappointment that he had mm. wow. from me not yes, having man. integrity mm -hmm. and and I always valued his <coughs> me and his relationship he mm -hmm. taught me a lot um you know just that disappointment that he had for me in that moment you know and I and then and back then I remember even thinking like it was just a it was just a party. Like y'all still had fun, didn't you? You know, I didn't you know, but but I had to realize what I brought to the table. Mm -hmm. And and a lot of times people don't understand that when you're not being integral, you know, even if it's something that, that you're not obligated to do, you know, people are counting on you. And being accountable and having integrity in those moments, that's what builds character and that's what that's what people remember you by. Right. You know, uh, is your ability to be integral and, and accountable. Um, you know, you can you can have all the flash and the, and the glitz and the glare and the bomb hair, but if if you ain't right, if you're not an integral person, you know those those times when you when you mess up or when you don't go through with something that you said that you're gonna do, whether it be a promise or or a job or whatever, that's what people remember you by, and you know that that always stuck with me. Yeah, real um, character and integrity is what people say about you when no when, when nobody you're else is around. around. Yeah, or when, when you're, you're not around. around. Mm -hmm. and, and you know what, too? The Holy Spirit just told me something. And a lot of times we have to understand, too, especially as children of God, this, this big right here. Like, when you walk as a person that's not of integrity, you're messing with your legacy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's good. Understand, because that's like you just said, that's your legacy is what you leave behind, right? Man, yeah. So for your kids, for your family, for people that know you, for people that you may have helped, like, your legacy should be important to you. Mm -hmm. So, you know, whenever I leave this earth, you know, I want my daughter to know that, hey, listen, my father was a man of the <coughs> word. He may not have been perfect. He may not have, you know, always mm -hmm. had the right the right answer. But, you know, when he said he was going to do something, he did it. Right. And, and, I, and when I look at him, I see that's a person that I want to be like. You right. understand? So I think, you know, we got to understand, like, the, the integrity part is, is highly important because that's how we, in a way, that's how you make a name for yourself in this mm -hmm. world. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of times we always thinking, oh, well, you know, it's, it's going to be all right. You know, God's going to bless mm -hmm. me. And, you know, yeah, God does love you, but you, you still have to operate in the system that he put on this earth. 
You understand? When you walk as a person who is a person of not integrity, mm-hmm. then you're messing with your legacy. Or what do you chime in on that? You, you said something real powerful. You were concerned about a person who you honored and respected, mm-hmm. your disappointment of him. And so who do people really look at who they're, who they're disappointing or who do people honor now? Because the key to promotion is honor. And where do we get our morals from? You had mentioned morality earlier. And so if we don't draw our mor- morals from the person that we should be trying to honor, and who should that be? And, and you know, so. Well, <clears throat> I believe we should be drawing it from Jesus. Um, I believe that we are here to do it like Jesus, and we're not here to do no more than Jesus. Like, mm. he is our master, and he tells us in his word, I'm not here to condemn, so we're not here to condemn. And I believe that um, with our moral principles that we try to do more than what he was doing. And just touching back on, um, Chris, what you were just saying, too, about, um, you said something about being concerned. You were talking about your legacy that you leave Mm -hmm. behind. And with that, you were saying, you know, for your daughter and for Mm -hmm. this and for that, but that also comes back again with you have to be concerned yep. about others that's other right. than yourself. Mm-hmm. That's what's going to help you stay in your integrity because I could step out of my integrity if I woke up and I'm only concerned about Laura. I don't care how my son look at me. I don't care about how the children that I get to teach on first and fifth Sunday mm-hmm. address me or I mean how they look at me. And so what helps me live in my integrity is um, just being able to put others first. When I go in to teach these kids, I need to be able to touch down on everything. I need to be able to say whatever the Holy Spirit gives me to say to them. I don't need to be, well, Lord, I can't address that because, you know, I got this going on and I got that going on. So my So my integrity is not just based upon me living this life, but it's about me being able to encourage others in every area and not putting a limitation on what I can discuss with others because of my own because of my own faults. So that's, that's really what helps me with in my integrity. Wow. Knowing mm-hmm. that I gotta go in on first and fifth Sunday and teach them babies and I wanna give them nothing but the absolute truth mm-hmm. and I want them to know that they can listen to me and know that it's always gonna come from come with love. The teaching, the rebuke, whatever it is I have to give them when I go in there, it's gonna be in love and integrity. So would you all really Realize that life is God's classroom and that you're teaching someone every day. Yes. Yeah. Yes. You know, this is bigger than church. This mm-hmm. is, this oh, yeah. is That's true. who mm-hmm. we are as a people, period. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I believe that, um, you know, church is a part of the kingdom, uh, but it's not the totality of the kingdom. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, the kingdom involves family, it involves the workplace, it involves our communities, it involves city, states, mm-hmm. nations, and nations mm-hmm. of the world. And so, you know, it's who we are every day. Mm-hmm. Because some people put on a hat at church, but that ain't how they really live. Mm-hmm. You know, That's right. and you're infecting more people outside of that church right. than you are in the church. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so this is just who I am, because character is who I really am. Mm-hmm. That's right. You know, it, it is how I behave in adverse situations. You know, how do I handle adversity? How do I handle when someone doesn't do right? Do I choose to not do right as well? You know, and so, you know, all, all these things are, are just true. And so, you know, I mentioned something that you, you got you to gotta care about someone else. And that's called love. Mm-hmm. And that's God's kind of love. Yeah. You know, and just getting into this, you know, you know, we need to know that the source of the ability to have character and integrity comes from God. Mm-hmm. Yes. And I'm not disappointed if I know someone has not, doesn't honor God. I don't expect much character or integrity from them because mm-hmm. they don't have the mm-hmm. ability to have yeah. my character yeah. and integrity. Mm-hmm. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So we got to go back and we got to deal with the source of things. And that's a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ mm-hmm. that it puts me back in right fellowship with God, where the source of my, all of my character, integrity, and who I honor, amen, that's how Brandon uh, is who I am when nobody's around. Because I know that I can't hide from God. Mm. Right. So I can't behave one way when everybody's looking at me and another way when nobody's looking because I cannot hide from God. Right. And if I honor him, that means I can be who I say I am no matter where I am. Mm. You know? And so, 
you know, how, how do we have these conversations with people? Because people are really struggling. They, they, they're challenged. But we got to, we got to have conversation. You know, that, that wasn't integral. Mm -hmm. You know, because what people are being taught, people are being taught how to lie, scheme. Finesse. Uh, <laughs> yeah, manipulate. You, go. you know, to get whatever they want. And that ain't love. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. and love is a fruit of the Spirit. And the only way you can get the a fruit of the Spirit is to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And to be spirit filled, mm -hmm. that's good. you know, and that's where we have uh, the character of God because real uh, character is God's character. That's right. Mm -hmm. You know, when we keep lowering the standards, mm -hmm. we keep lowering the standards, but the world is getting worse and worse. Yeah. And the scripture tells us when the enemy comes in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord raises up a standard against it. Mm -hmm. So where where are people getting their standards from today? You know. And, and like I said, we got to call what's not integral, yeah. uh, what, what's not uh, a good character to be displayed. You know, uh, you angry, so I got angry. You wouldn't have said nothing to me. I wouldn't have turned up on you. Right. you know, I mean, people, right. people, people That's are true, though. That's they true. Lose their wrong yeah, behavior. People right. are even getting checks for this oh, foolishness. Yeah. You know, and, yeah. and they're calling them reality shows. Mm -hmm. But... What I just read to you about reality, our reality really should come from God. He should be our reality. And so, just throwing that out there. Yeah. Wow. To me, that that's, sounds like that's going to take boldness. It's just going it's just going to take some boldness. You gonna be, you just gonna have to be like, you know what? It's okay. I know everybody's not going to like me. I'm just going to, it's just going to take some boldness, and you're going to have to just be able to move past people. My son was praying last week one morning and that's what he said he said thank you lord that we don't have to be moved by what people say mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and just by and we got to get to a point we're not we're not moved past what they think either mm -hmm. when we want when you say something and you know it's the truth and you know it's lining up with his word yeah. you got to just walk away and say i just did your will lord and it's okay yeah. if they mm -hmm. don't it's okay and not be well i, I wonder what they said and uh, i wonder what they're thinking and this is mm -hmm. it's just gonna take some boldness yeah and I, uh, I actually had to get to a place to where I realized that with me holding my tongue or, or not correcting something when it was done to me, you know what I'm saying? If someone's not integral with me, with me if I sit back and allow that to happen, mm. that's a discredit of my character. Mm. Wow. Mm. Yeah. Not just not just of their that's character. True. Yeah, that's they might have did something, you know. Right. You know what I'm saying? You know, Brandon tell me that he's going to bring me a Snickers bar. <laughs> I'm looking for that Snickers bar. Right. You know what I mean? Right. You know, and if, and if I let them make it without that Snickers bar, then where do I stand? Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? So, like, I, I had to learn that for, for me, for, for myself, for, for Gerald Jr. You know, if I want to stay integral, if I want to have, have the, be the character that God has called me to be, then I can't let other people make it with me. That's mm -hmm. Ooh, yeah. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. I can't let you just slide by me. Yes, I can't let you not have integrity with me. I can't let you uh, get me out of character. Mm -hmm. I can't let you, you know what I'm saying, pull me off right. and have me doing it's things good. that, it in either way. And and like I say, you know, if if I expect for someone to have integrity with me and then I allow them not to, then I just discredited <laughs> myself it's true. in that process. Yeah. And I think a lot of people don't understand it because we... As a people in this society, we think that being nice is 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 allowing people to just do whatever they want right. to do, right. and that's not the truth. And I had to learn that because mm -hmm. uh, in the past I've always been that that passive guy. And and honestly, you know, kind of owning a business kind of got me to that point. Yeah. Um. You know, to where I had to be. You know, I had to. I'm just saying, I had to have a backbone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh. You know, and 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 I believe that you can be integral and that you can be strong. Uh, that you can be honest and right. still have that backbone. Uh, you know, just because you're a good person, that doesn't mean that people should be able to just do you any kind of way. Yeah. And I think that that's a misunderstanding mm -hmm. uh, when you talk about <laughs> character and honesty and things of that nature. Uh, you know, as the standard that you hold yourself to, you should also be able to hold that to somebody else. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. you know, and I think that that's where it starts is, you know, hey, I want to... In, in, in the golden rule, treat those as you want to be treated with. Right. Hey, I want to live a life of integrity. I want to be honest. Mm -hmm. Well, I also have to allow 
people to be honest with me. Right. Not to allow Amen. people to be integrated. Yes. And if they're not, then I have to hold them accountable. Mm-hmm. Because that could deter me from being to, from achieving my place yeah. of character where I'm mm-hmm. trying to get to. And real quick, just and to I think, oh, go ahead, go ahead. Stand and on. I just think that in that I hear like code of ethics. Like there is mm-hmm. a way that we should do things, and we should yeah. be ethical with each other because mm-hmm. that's our relationship with the Father. Yeah. And so, and we are our brother's keeper, mm-hmm. and we have to be able to hold each other accountable and be responsible for that. You know what I'm saying? Right. I love you all the more because you help me to be, you know, integral and mm-hmm. to maintain maintain my character right. because at the at the end of the day and at the end of those situations <laughs> I always think about right, that right, right, right. <laughs> but, I know where you was going I know right but I mean we are the representation of Christ right and so we have to maintain his character and his reputation and his integrity because we represent him and he represents the kingdom yeah. and that's the way that we get things done in the earth realm is through operating like him and so it's a code of ethics it's being ethical all of that is a part of that that's true yeah now real quick i was just gonna chime in what laura said earlier um you have to understand the biggest bondage on this on this earth is being in bondage to other people and what they think about you and a lot of times having integrity I'm real talk yeah but but but, but, but yeah, think about this for a second but so many people aren't because the first thing they do like you said lord you know they may wake up in the morning and have a specific mission from god and the Holy Spirit may guide them and lead them to do something, go somewhere. And the first first thing they do, they walk into work and somebody say something about them or somebody talking about them or laughing about them. It changed their whole course of what they was about to do. Mm-hmm. And, yes, and, and it takes it takes being strong. It takes being in the presence of the Lord. I'm going to tell you something, man. Listen, when I walk out of work, I really don't care what nobody say about me. I'm just going to throw it out there. Whether mm-hmm. you laugh, I, I don't walk up on people laughing at me before. Yeah, yeah. I don't walk up on people talking crazy. You know what? Mm-hmm. It don't bother me. Mm-hmm. But the key is what Laura says because having integrity is understanding who you are and your mission and what yeah. you're supposed to be doing on a daily basis. Man, so yeah. you don't have to worry about you don't have to worry about those type of things when you plugged in every day mm-hmm. with, with your creator. Because mm-hmm. a lot of times, you know, I may step out somewhere. And, you know, I may have a whole lot of people, oh, Chris, you this, you know, remember what happened five years ago, and I'm I'm saying, like, man, listen, first of all, I I don't remember none of that. And number two, (laughs) okay. And number two, but but see, when I say I don't remember, it's not that I don't recollect that it happened. Mm -hmm. It's just I understand I'm cleansed. Yeah, I'm cleansed by the blood of the whole 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 spirit of Jesus. So I'm not worried about y'all. Y'all the ones talking about five years ago, bro. I'm on some new stuff right now. And I I, I know what I'm doing. And I'm so glad you said that because, you know, I I wish I would have heard that five years ago yeah. right wow. five years ago because five years ago I I could walk up on somebody quote unquote talking about me or whatever mm-hmm. and it would mess my day <laughs> it it all the way up. <laughs> but, but at the yeah. same time yeah. I would let them make it I, I'm not a confrontational mm-hmm. person yeah. right. so like I, I would I would I would it's almost like the words that they would be saying would it would affect me mm-hmm. it would have effect on me it was like they would win and I didn't even confront it like I didn't even put up a fight or a yeah, battle yeah. You know, so I'm glad that you said that because people need to know that. But I will say this. I lost that when I reunited, or not reunited, but when I got in touch with my relationship with Jesus Christ. And I started to realize who I was in him. Then all of that, you know, it didn't matter. Today, I went around and I was handing out cookies to to different stores that have referred our business. And the first one I walked into... Knew the two, I knew the two young ladies that were working there, mm-hmm. and as I was walking out the door, I heard one of them say, "He just think he's so cool," and used to. Mm-hmm. Now I just gave you a batch of cookies, right? Right. And right thanked right, you, right? right and thanked right, you, right? You know, for, but whatever. Yeah, and yeah. I do think I'm cool because yeah. I am Come cool. On. But yes. but Come five on. years ago, that would have affected me. Right. I would have drove off and been thinking like, "Man, do I think uh, you know what I'm saying? I'd have had all these different yeah. kinds of emotions. I love awesome. my hairs. Thank you. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. I like my sweat. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just, Man. And, uh, I, love, I love you all. But man, I, I didn't get to that point until I gained a relationship with Jesus Amen. Christ. Yes. And in that, I had to realize like who I am as a person, who I, who I want to be. I'm going to be that person regardless of what any anybody can say. I'm sorry, y'all. He into it. But he I'm going to be that person regardless because, because now I know who I am in Jesus. Yes. See, before I just knew who I was in, in, in the mind of G. Yeah. In, you know what I'm saying? Yes. 
good. And 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 I'm gonna tell you this, my 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 name, I was I've always been a junior, so I always I people used to say, Hey Gerald Jr. and I would correct them and say, No, I'll call me G. <laughs> but now I don't correct them. Right. Because I know who I am. You know who your yes. father is. You know what I'm saying? Okay. And I know who my father is. <laughs> oh, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so like, help like us. used to used to I would correct people. But that all comes with having a relationship with Amen. Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ, right? Yes. And, and and knowing who you are and getting to know you, getting to know who you are through Him. Mm -hmm. But man, I'm telling you, man, five years ago, bro, stuff like that would happen, and it's crazy because people think that you can't hear them, right? Even if you're not around them, yeah. the Holy Spirit will let you in on stuff that people right. are saying look, or right. things that's going look, on. Monique, do you remember when Dad preached that service and he was talking about how we're gonna start hearing conversations? Yes. Man, you've been hearing ever since. Ever since. <laughs> ever yes. since. Yes. And I mean, you know, it's to the point now. I'll say stuff that I know you didn't say, and you. I'm telling you, like I, it, and it'd be clear as day, and it's real. Like, but that's a whole nother topic. <laughs> that's, that's a whole other topic. But, but, that's, but that's real, though. I said that to say that you know, as we begin to really operate in character and integrity, there comes the confidence, there mm -hmm. comes the boldness. Yes, you do. Yes. You know, there comes an assurance because you know what God has said about you. Right. You know what He's saying to you, and yes. you know what He's saying through you. So, like, Thank confidence you know. is amazing, and so that's that raising of the standard. Is that this is the word it's a sure foundation and I'm gonna stand on it yes. and so even if even if you know we we get to a point and so we do something that's out of character or you know we have to be um you know corrected you receive that mm -hmm. in love you mm -hmm. know what I mean and mm -hmm. so I receive correction in love yes. you know because I thank you God you're not leaving me that way that means that you're taking me to another level mm -hmm. I'm just I'm about to get promoted right and right. so and I receive that and so that's amazing that you say that yes. but Confidence. So yeah. you're describing losing an identity crisis. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. You no longer have an identity crisis anymore. Thank People you, that are acting out of character and don't have integrity is functioning from a place of identity crisis and two kinds of righteousness. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, and people have to realize that they, uh, when you're born again, you are now the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And the persecution that you should be receiving is for righteousness sake. In other words, if you're saying uh, Christopher thinks he's all of that, uh, I've just been who God has, has created me to be and right. I'm doing what he says I should do. Mm -hmm. I, I did, I was integral, I had character. I, character. I know I had to fire you, but you fired yourself because you're the one that didn't come to work. <coughs> you're the one that stole, you're the one that did this. I had to have character because the people that I work for hired me to manage and watch over what belongs to them. Amen. And if I allow you to get away with this, then I'm not having character and I'm not being integral. Right. And so I can proudly walk by and I, I, I'm sorry for this had to happen, but you did it to yourself, you know, mm -hmm. and, and, and feel and go home and sleep and have peace. You'll pray for them, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying, and things that make you don't want nobody to ever lose that. Right. But many times, it's not the first time. That's something that's been going on for years. Mm -hmm. And that is why it's so important what you said, Gerald. Don't let people be integral around you because you're perpetuating it. Yep. Oh, if wow. it perpetuates in them, it could perpetuate to their children. And now you got generational uh, character flaws mm -hmm. and non-integral people in society and in earth. And those are the next people that are going to be running your businesses. Those are the next people that are going to be, you know, teaching your your, stu your kids and all the different types of things. And so we have a demise in morality. Mm -hmm. Hello. Mm -hmm. And Man. so that is why this Man. is so important. This mm -hmm. is why I wanted you guys to have a conversation because you guys have got to touch the generations that your peers and those that are coming up, you're raising children. Laura talked about how our son was praying. Man, that's, that's, that's an amazing. That's powerful. You know, I thank God I can live a life uh, that my son is not ashamed of my life. Amen. You know, and when he didn't understand that, I said, your dad's home every night. Mm -hmm. Your dad is, has a sober mind every day, every mm -hmm. night. Wow. Your dad's doing the right things with his money. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. and, and these types of things. And you can be proud of that. Now, that wasn't what society was telling him. Right. Society was telling that because we ain't turned up, you know. Right. We, we right. were old folk or whatever. But really what we were, were honorable to God. Mm -hmm. and we understood yeah. that what mm -hmm. life really meant. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and so these things are important. These things are important. So just one thing I wanted to mention, and, and that's the definition of love, agape love, the love of God. 
And you talked about, um, you know, you got to love people. You got to, you got to really uh, be concerned about someone else. And so the love that we should have, which comes from Christ, that's the fruit of the Spirit, the first fruit of the Spirit, which is love, is unselfish, loyal, and benevolent concern for the well-being of another. That's what we should really have. And uh, many times people are, act, uh, are don't have character and integrity because they're really trying to uh, uh, satisfy their flesh, mm-hmm. trying to satisfy what they want, okay, mm-hmm. and have no regard, no respect for you, yeah. uh, no respect for the next person or whatever. And, uh, and that's, that's not the love of God, Amen. you know. Amen. And so character doesn't mean anything to you, mm. you know. You can, you can just do it. Well, anyway, that's, you got to have that conversation. <laughs> Character and integrity, yeah. um, that, that's amazing. You guys have had a, a powerful conversation. Your last comments, the last comments. Well, uh, really my last comment uh, is Matthew 5, 36, 37. Nor shall you swear by your head because you cannot make one hair white or black, but let your yes be yes and your no be no, for whatever is more than that comes from the evil one. Wow. That's integrity summed up right there. Yeah, that's good. I was just going to say that um, it's been sticking out to me. When you're operating in, in good character and integrity, it's awesome how you're, it changes the atmosphere around you. Mm-hmm. Um, people, people, people understand that they can't do certain things around you. Oh my. <laughs> they can't talk a certain way around you. It qualifies you. your environment. You know, it, does. it does. Yeah, it and does. that's, that's something did. that's just been sticking out to me. I know like you was talking about how society tells you your parents are being a certain way if they're living a certain way. I've always known that it's stuff I can't do around my parents. Right. Even, when I was, even when I was in the world, right, you know, right. Right. I knew that because of the character and integrity that my parents had. Yes. That's good. Yes. It was some. It was stuff that wasn't gonna fly. I can't do it. <laughs> and so character and integrity controls your atmosphere. Mm. Okay. That's, hey, good. that's, that's good. good. That's, that's deep. deep off the chain. Mm. Yeah. That's next week. There you go, <laughs> man. Yeah. Um, well, I had just had two things I want to touch on. Um, but first, I want to talk about you know the the job situation keeps coming up tonight about being late. And um, <laughs> and, and um and just in that, I'm like, I bet it's someone out there that's listening right now, and they're dealing with that process. And I want to share a story with the listeners because if we can just encourage one, the, the angels in heaven rejoice over one soul, and we'll rejoice over this one too. But I just want to encourage you. I was in a situation where my boss had to come to me. They was changing over the uh, system at work. And so the tardies that you had were going to be more than what they would have been on the old system. <laughs> and so the boss comes to me and he's like, one more tardy, you out. And I was like, whoa, he got real. One more tardy and I'm going to be fired from a job that I have been, <laughs> been at over 10 years. Wow. Lord, I don't want to lose my job. I, I like my job. I love my job. I love what I do. Right. So you best believe that integrity kicked in. Right. That character kicked in. It did. <laughs> it kicked in. That's good, and the parties weren't gonna fall off to like January. You best believe I went almost. I went a whole two months. One late. Okay. Was not late at all because it kicked in something that I was concerned about. Right. Mm-hmm. I was concerned. Sure. Now I didn't realize how concerned I was until something got because until I got my warning. There you go. <laughs> Sometimes folks just need to be warned. Yep. Mm-hmm. And when you are warned, if you care, you're gonna get yourself right. Oh, you don't care about the patient. That warning's got to come <laughs> on the jobs. The warnings has got to come even with living this life for Christ. Mm-hmm. You gotta pull the brother sister to the side mm-hmm. and you gotta give them a warning. Hey, your character is out of order. Hey, your integrity is out of order. But I'm going to warn you with love there and through go. the word of God yeah. to give you an opportunity to get yourself in order. That's good. And uh just one more thing too, just bouncing back off what you said about um being able to receive correction, mm-hmm. you can't be a respected person. Uh-oh. That's, that's one of the main problems, too, that people are not receiving a correction because it ain't coming from people that they want it to come from. Sometimes your correction, sometimes my correction comes from a child. Sometimes it may come uh, from someone that you don't even believe is living this life, but your correction is going to come, and you can't be a respected person when it comes. Wow. Mm, that's good. Man, yeah. My final thoughts are, 
<clears throat> just know that in being integral and not being integral, uh, having good character and not having good character, they all have a price. Um, and both are very heavily weighted. Uh, it can cost you a lot when you're not integral and when you don't have integrity. Mm. And it can gain you a lot when you do. Uh, and That's really, That's really always cool. having integrity and having character is is a lot is a lot better than paying that price mm -hmm. for not having integrity. <clears throat> not having integrity integrity can cost you dearly. Mm -hmm. uh, it can cost you friends, family, relationships, jobs. It can cost you everything. Um, you know, having integrity and doing what you say you're gonna do it will take you so much further mm -hmm. in life. You will you will sustain relationships. You will. You will gain more money. You will you will achieve success uh, by being integral and honest and and having a good character. So, whatever choice you choose, whatever price you put on it, you decide how you pay. Mm -hmm. So, make sure you choose the right direction. Be a person of integrity. Mm -hmm. Be a man or woman of your word. And uh, above all else, connect with Jesus Christ because all of that ties back to having a relationship with Jesus. Amen. So, Amen. That's powerful. Yes, it yeah. is. Um, one of the things that uh, we're going to cover in this series, we're going to talk about qualifying our environment on next week. Mm. But uh, that's going to, the things in order to do that, you're going to have to have humility, faithfulness, forgiveness, courage, integrity, loyalty, diligence, gratitude, compassion, and patience in order to achieve those things. And that's when you will be operating in what you've all been alluding to and going back to is Christ-like character. Mm. You know, those things are going to have to be operating in your life. And it's a process. It's a process. I believe Stephanie Monique mentioned that, you know, it, as she's begin to grow and receiving uh, correction and things of nature, it allowed her character to be formed and shaped. And that's what God does when we begin a process we don't develop in a day. We develop daily. Mm -hmm. And uh, you don't have to feel nervous if you're listening today. If it's a lot of things kind of hit you, you heard Laura's testimony. When she got the warning, she said, you know what? This is, I don't, I don't want to lose my job. It, it had a value to her. Mm -hmm. And she found out that she could do something that she <clears> hadn't <throat> been doing previously. And I just want to encourage you out there that you are a, a child of God, even if you hadn't confessed Christ yet. You need to get reconnected, okay, to the creator. But his spirit is on the inside of you. And because you're created in his image and in his likeness, you have everything you need to have the character of God operating in your life, the integrity of God operating in your life. You just need to recognize what you need to do. And it's got to be big enough. Gerald alluded to, you're paying a price. You're either losing out on life or you're gaining an abundant life. And Laura mentioned order. And until you get order in your life, and that's one, acknowledging the Lord Jesus Christ as Savior, getting reconnected to God once again, then you begin getting in divine order, and you'll start seeing your life increase. Start seeing increase. You can lose the frustrations, the anger, come out of disappointments and different things of that nature, and begin progressing in life and ultimately getting on course with your destiny. And that's the place that God created you for that's where you finish to cross the finish line. Yeah. That's when you when you you have the ultimate place of peace and joy, and uh, the prosperous life that God wants us to have. Amen. 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 Relationships Amen. and so Stephanie, have the last words and pray for us. Okay, uh, we've been teaching a little bit out of our book, New Life, New You. Mm -hmm. You can get that at naly.org. You can also order it on Amazon. Just look up New Life, New You by Gerald Patterson, and you can get that uh, right now on your Kindle. Your yeah, digital device, and uh, all these things we've been talking about is inside this book from a person just understanding what it means to be born again, all the way through dealing with your character and everything else. Okay, Amen. so uh, it's available to you. Remember, follow us on YouTube, mm -hmm. Gerald Patterson, New Life. I mean, uh, Life Lessons. Okay, and you can get these recordings and all of our shows uh, from uh, uh, 
uh, the last few weeks. Amen? Amen. Amen. Stephanie? Amen. I was just going to say exactly what you said, Bishop. Just if you find yourself in that place, repent and get back on top. When you repent, you're restored back into the penthouse, and God loves you, and he's going to continue to just move on you and push you and get you to that there place. So with that being said, Heavenly Father, thank you for allowing us this time to share in your word god thank you for the impartation that you have given on tonight god thank you for all of the testimonies these great minds oh god thank you for us being able to share and to pull from one another thank you for those people that are around us that are holding us accountable thank you for the mentors god the pastors oh god that are helping us to be better god thank you for illuminating your word in our heart that we can maintain the character and the integrity that we need to get to our destiny and to be on course with purpose. I thank you for it in your son Jesus' name. Amen and amen. 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 See you guys next week. Awesome. Awesome. Mr. Hanson, do you have an extra book with you? I do. I like that. I do. It's a good book, man. It probably, you don't read it in like an hour. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. Not yeah. if you studied. The not if you well, studied. Not, <laughs> you can read the book. You can read it. But, but it has studies, scripture. Stu oh, okay. All the way I got you. So okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to study. I'm going to study. I feel you, bro. One of you guys who have an iPhone, we can start. Um, Facebook lives in it or whatever. Maybe mount one up. Oh, okay. Put it in the